Hello, hi, welcome. It's Alex. Back to the YouTube channel. Oh, you want to end the video? Okay. And it's Donut. Donut's in the YouTube video today. Well, today what we're going to plan to do, we're going to get the car ready because stages, well, states are opening it up in the yellow phase and Samantha decided to do some traveling. We got to get the car ready. Anyways, that leads me to my next topic. You guys don't know me. You guys don't know Samantha. So I'm going to give you 10 tips. Not tips. I'm going to give you 10 facts about Alex and Samantha. And also, I'm going to take you guys' questions live and answer them. And what I mean live, because only like three people watch this, like including my wife, it's going to be me Googling the top 10 questions to ask somebody on a date and acting like it's live. It's, it's pretty interesting. And I, I think that's today's video, right? All right, we just dropped the car off for our oil change. So we have some time. So I'm gonna take a viewer's question, I'm gonna answer it, AKA Google, and figure out what to say. So let's pull up the mining Googles. Let me do it. Samantha's actually gonna find a question, so it's gonna be more robust and spontaneous. Anytime, Samantha. Do you have, or have you ever had any pets? Talk about your pets. Oh. Have you seen donuts? So the question is, do I have or ever have any pets? I do, I have a lot of pets. I actually only have one pet, and his name is Donald Ferguson. Oh my God, I love that dog so much. Donald Ferguson is the cutest thing. When he wakes up in the morning, he goes in between both of us. Wow, super rude, but he goes between both of us when we sleep. He, he turns around and we just give him belly rubs. He, like, and he makes his little, this weird sound. Like, wah, 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 wah. And I, Look, I got recorded for you one of these days. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna leave a link in the description because he has a YouTube channel. His name is Donut Ferguson. He's one of the popular pugs in the world. He's also, he's the fastest pug too. I think so. Don't quote me on that. All right, next question. If you were stranded on a deserted island and you could only have one item, what would it be? All right, if I was stranded on a deserted island and I only could have one item, what would it be? Like, like a practically point or something to keep me sane? It doesn't matter. There's no guidelines on this. All right, so if, if it's um something practical, um, i probably bring my knife. Uh, I love my knife. Okay, no, non-practical. Let's pretend you already have everything there that you need, like a knife and water. All right. But is there like a food that you can't live without? Tacos, but I think that's a one, one and done thing. But I will bring, I don't know. What would I bring? Good question. I'd bring my phone if there was Wi-Fi. You'd bring your phone. If there was Wi-Fi. You're on the desert island. And you're going to have, wifi. Gonna have a, a Wi-Fi tower. Like, oh, we just came here and just built this tower. Well, that way I could keep in touch with everyone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just like, oh, yeah. Just we built this tower just in case you get lost. You can keep in touch with everybody. And you can leave when you want to leave. <laughs> I will bring, um, let me tell you, because I can't bring anything power because if I if it's if you lose battery I can't recharge it so your phone is gonna be done like in two days so what do you want no I, I will bring Donut. this no that's not a thing it's fine hello um this is a doozy <laughs> uh, it's hard because she says everything essential I brought already is there on the island like All I right, so you have water and you have your knife you have very simple basic needs things but if you could choose anything frivolous what would it be? You know what? You know what I would do? I would bring a guitar. Why? You don't play guitar much. I do, but I feel like on a deserted island, I need to do something to entertain myself. An acoustic guitar, as long as I know how to tune it by ear, and it could entertain me. I could, I could pretty much write a song every day and just sing Kubaya on a campfire and have a good time by myself. That's what I would bring. I would bring a guitar, keep myself entertained, and everything else, and the non-free time I have would probably be making Tents and cabins and rope out of vine. Like man versus wild stuff. And spear. I want to go spear fishing. Next question. What are some of your long-term goals? All right. Some of my long-term goals. Well, I I don't know you guys know this or you, you don't know this or do know this. I have an agency. Wife Factor Media. Go check them out. I want that to be a $100 million agency. And I want this YouTube channel. I want the YouTube channel to be something to... I want this YouTube channel to be flourished and have a community, talk to you guys, connect with you guys, and tell them what everything's going on. I think that's what I'm going on. Also, too, also, my other long term girls is I want to run the marathon. I want to run, like, a, a New York City marathon. And also, 
I want to do a full planch push up, which is one of them push ups that you levitate and you just lift, you just use your body weight. Do that one of these things. All right, one more question and we will go do some other stuff. All right, who do you look up to? Who are your heroes? Because uh, I don't have anything pulled up anymore. My heroes. They could what? be cartoon or real. Oh, they're all guys. I love a lot of. Well, let's see. For cartoon heroes, I'm really into anime, and one of my favorite animes that inspire me all the time is My Hero Academia, and and I like the main character Deku because he he started pretty normal. He wanted to be a hero, and he didn't have these quirks. So let me give you an over, overview of the show if you don't know. My Hero Academia is about students that go to school to be heroes, and each everybody lives in a world that has quirks. Quirks, which is something unique about yourself, and you can have like a superpower, pretty much a superpower, and you could do things. And Deku, the main character, he didn't have a superpower, so he meet the super ultra. He meets this Best guy. Hero, the number one hero. He meets the number one hero called All Might, and All Might has his one power called All for One, and he passes on to Deku, and you see him progress to be nothing to one of the best heroes. So that's the story, and it's inspiring to see that. And I think his journey is, inspires me to do things all the time. I actually cry and see his weakness, and see his moments, and <clears throat> something I wanted to aspire to do for this video series, so you guys see. And he's taking me to see two movies. Oh yeah, two movies. I saw them all the time. And so that's my, that's my cartoon hero. My other hero, hero, I should say someone I admire to not a hero. It's this YouTuber called Alex Becker. He's, anytime he has a video, I pretty much watch it. It's, it's like filled with red hot info. And he's always find something, he takes, he always have value to make my life better and then realize something I don't, I don't even know I had a problem with until he brings it up. I'm like, oh, you know what, that is true. That is something I need to work on. So. That's two heroes I look up to. It is Deku and Alex Becker. All right, so see you guys later. Well, I'm not really doing anything. We'll just go find some other things, different background. All right, back in the car, the oil is done. And whoo, oh God, I don't know about you, but it was $111. It was worth it. I don't know that's a good price. Usually, why well, I change my oil, I do it myself. It's like 50 bucks well, max. Cheap. Max. And it's that good stuff. It's like Mobile One synthetic. She got this European stuff. Like, my philosophy when it comes to changing oil, clean oil is better than having dirty oil. So, as long as you keep changing your oil, it's good for your car. You don't need these specialty blends and stuff like that. I trust them. My car is getting older. I think it's worth it. Uh, I just get high mileage Mobile One. And even is the mobile one actually have a European one, I think. So, I don't know. You guys let me know. You guys, how much you guys spend for oil change or maintenance or where do you go? Or do you do it yourself? Do you? Uh, I don't know. I used to be a DIY guy. Now I just send it to shops. But when I send it to shops, it's my local mechanic. And he's far away. And also, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't even have a car anymore. So. Alright, since the car got the oil change and it was the price of the oil change, now we got tie-ups on to the end. So right now we're going to Samantha's dad's work. There's something really cool that I want to show you about Samantha's dad's work. I think you guys like it. Well, Samantha's dad, his boss name is Jeff and Jeff flies planes and there's, he has a plane there at the garage. people buying building a boat in their basement no you haven't you've never seen tv shows where they're down in the basement working on a boat you've never no. seen that no like csi and all them uh, the guy's always down working on his boat no well they're never going to come out because they're built in the basement this is how this is it's never it's a, it can't come out of here it's just for books <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> no. yeah so speaking of how would you get it out how would know. you we're open for suggestions yeah, because you build it. It's kind of like uh, building a, a, no, a ship in, the, in a bottle. No. <laughs> We're going to take the wings off. All right. So what was the 
the process? Like, what did you do? Like, how do you buy this? In, in it's, it's, it comes in a kit. It actually comes in a crate. Um, actually, there's one out. If you want to see another one, there's one out here in a wing. There's a wing out here in a crate. See that crate that's over here? That's how it comes. That's what it looks like. That's a wing. All right. You can't buy this on Amazon, can you? <laughs> Is that, is that like a rotary engine? No, no, Rotax is just the name of the company from Austria. All right. It's a 100 horse uh, made specifically for light planes, so they're very popular. They're lightweight, but yet they're very powerful. So. Yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. I had a, a RX-7 before, and um, you know, I don't know if you don't know about RX-7s, but they have rotary engines. They were really small. And the cool thing about it was, is the RPMs. You could rev it up to like 10K. Yeah. And you don't, you, you know, you rev the engine up. It's like, ee, ee, you just kept going. Yeah. And that was airplane engines. Well, these are a little bit unique because they're, they're air, air, oil, air cold, but they're water cold also. That's a radiator underneath. Most airplanes aren't radiators, but this is neat because you can run them a little harder. So. Nice. So, so how long have you been flying planes for? Or just how long have I been doing it? Yeah. Uh, five years, May 8th. All right. So, it's been a long process, but most people, it takes them five to eight years to build one. So. Really? And you have to learn how to do covering. If you, if you notice, this is all fabric. Wow. Yeah. You would never think that. I thought yeah. it would be that's metal, fabric. like sheet that's metal or something. That's all fabric. Wow. So, you have to learn how to do that. So that's a whole different skill. How do you get it tight like that? You use like a heat gun or something? It's like a that? special, it's called Super Flight material and what happens when you put heat to it it actually shrinks it up like a drum so you got to have it all glued on and all the seams done and then when you heat it it gets tight it just shrinks so nice. it's a learning curve so, so, so it's a two-seater it looks pretty tight for being a two-seater actually it's, it's yeah with the doors down it's called a bubble because the doors mm -hmm. come out actually it's bigger than a trainer really the plane i learned to fly in our, L, our shoulders were crossing. It was so tight. This has a lot more room. The whole point, you got to keep them light. Uh, more, the lighter they are, the more performance you get. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. I, I bought a drone, and you think it look hefty, right. but it's really light. Yeah. Like super light. I think it was like 250 grams. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow. And it's, we're going to weigh this this week. It's probably going to come in around 850, 900 pounds total. Really? Yeah. That's, that's super light. Well... You get into a lot of rules. This is called a light sport, so mm -hmm. it's got to be under 1320 total. Mm -hmm. That's the rules. So 1320 is like you can't be more than that when you have two people in it and fuel. So it's, it's sort of a light sport pilot thing. Is it like a like like a driver's license at A class, B class, yeah, C class? Yeah. So light sport has different rules, not as, as not as many rules for it. But I'm a pilot, so I can actually. I could have built this a little heavier, but I'm going to still license it as a light sport. So, so what's, the, what's the benefits of building a heavier or lighter, besides regulations? Um, that's a good question. Number one, you can get your license quicker on this. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not as many rules, not as many inspections. I mean, mm -hmm. there are inspections on this, but it's not as stringent. This is more for sport, where if you get into utility, then there's a lot more rules of how you have to have them inspected. So Todd was talking about inspection about the tail wing. Like, you want to talk more about that? The tail dragger? Yeah, tail dragger. The tail dragger is basically, I was a good example of you took a shopping cart and you went down the aisle in the shopping center pushing mm -hmm. it normal, the cart, and you pushed it, the cart goes straight. Mm -hmm. The tail dragger, take the shopping cart around, push it backwards, now push it. As soon as it goes off center, it wants to go left and right. Mm -hmm. A lot harder to fly, but you can land a lot more places because the prop is higher up off the ground. Mm -hmm. And this is, think of this as a Jeep. Mm -hmm. So you can actually um, take it on dirt roads, grass runways, and it's it's more rugged, you know. It's more, think of Alaska. Oh, wow. So you, where a, tricycle gear that's when the nose is up front mm -hmm. basically you're limited to paved runways what? so these are more versatile and they're heavier i mean they can take more abuse 
Wow, you didn't so, think of that being so yeah, light. Yeah, you can put bigger tires on this, but it takes a little bit more skill to fly. You just have to be more aware of the rudder. Well, in other words, they call when you when you fly a tail dragger, mm -hmm. they say you have to have happy feet because your feet are always going to be dancing on that rudder to keep it straight. So lighter it is, is it hard to fly through the wind on the windy days? In the wind it is, yeah. It's more, you're more aware of the wind. Yeah, I noticed that, like what, even with cars, like I had a super light car, and you really feel everything, but when it's heavy, nice luxury car, it, you, more smooth. Is that the same case with planes? Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks yep, for that. You're welcome. I'm going to shoot some cool stuff, and then maybe I'll send you a link if you see yeah. it. Pretty much wrapped everything up for today. We did our little errands, and now we're home. And since we're going away, we bought we bought Donut a toy at Target, and we're going to give it to him. We're going to give it to him to say sorry for leaving you for a day or two or three. So let's go give it to him. Got you a toy. You want it? You want the toy? You want the toy, Donut? You want the toy? You, you want the toy? Go get it. Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Oh! Donut, I got your toy, I got your toy, I got your toy, I got your toy, I got your toy. Oh. <laughs> got you. You wanna go get it, Palin? Oh, you threw it too fast. Oh. Safe to say, he probably liked his toy. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Also thanks Jeff for letting me record in that little interview of his airplane. How it was 51% he got to make. It was fun. It was fun asking questions. Actually, it was fun really recording it too. And it was all, all in all a pretty good day. I hope you guys learned a little bit more about me. And comment down below. I want to know more about you. I want to, I want to know more. And I'll come back. I spent like a whole night re replying back to your comments. I will. Trust me. Promise. And Oh, and one more thing. We're not going to the beach tonight. I thought we were, but it turns out we wasn't. We're just preparing to go to the beach for tomorrow. I thought we was hurrying up, hustling, and get everything done today so we could go to a drive and go do it. But apparently South Carolina from Pennsylvania where we're at is about nine hours. And she was like, no, I'm not doing that because you're not going to drive. I was like, you're probably right on that. I don't like driving. But chances are I'm going to drive anyway because you know how that works. All right. See you guys. See you guys tomorrow. Alex out.